everybody. Welcome back to POW Science Experiments. My name is Mr. Miles. I will once again be your POW Science Scientist for the next five or so minutes. So today we are going to start off here in the basement, but in a little while we are actually going to take a trip outside to scenic Mr. Miles' backyard. And that's because today's experiment is a very explosive one. So, so when I show you what the materials are for this experiment, you're probably going to be able to guess what we're doing, because this is a very famous experiment, a very classic experiment, but that doesn't mean it's not still cool and fun to watch. So our first material that we need is... Some Mentos minty candies. Now, it's very important that these are the regular minty Mentos. They come in a blue tube. It looks like this. And the reason that is is because the fruity ones or the, I think there's a chocolate flavored one, all the other flavors have a coating on the outside that doesn't make the experiment work as well. So you want to get the old school blue tube minty Mentos. And the other thing you need is you need some sort of container to put them in. Now I have a clear plastic tube here because it looks very, very good on camera, but you might not have a clear plastic tube and that's fine. You can also make yourself a tube out of paper. So this is just a piece of cardstock that I rolled into a nice tube shape. I can see right through it. And then I just taped it up with a little bit of tape. So you wanna make it slightly smaller than you think you're going to need because what's really important is that all the Mentos can stay stacked like this. If the Mentos don't stack up like this in your tube, it's going to be very hard when you do the experiment to put all the Mentos in to our other ingredient all at once. And what is that other ingredient you might be asking? Diet soda. So it can be Pepsi, it can be Coke, it can be some other brand, but what it does have to be is it has to be diet. And the reason it has to be diet is because this is an experiment that has to do with the fizz that is inside of soda. And diet soda tends to be a little bit fizzier than regular soda because the sugar in regular soda makes the soda make big bubbles that pop really fast, whereas the smaller bubbles from diet soda stick around a little bit longer. So diet works better for any experiment that involves soda fizzing. So if you haven't already guessed, our experiment today is going to be putting our Mentos mints inside of our diet soda, and it's going to make a big foamy geyser. So a lot of us have seen this before, we know what's going to happen, but what I'm going to tell you today is I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to make your diet soda geyser the best geyser it could possibly be, and I'm also going to tell you a little bit about the science of what's actually happening here. So our first tip today is... Heat up your soda. Now you have to do this a little bit carefully. You don't want to just heat it up and then let it sit around for a long time before you do the experiment. You want to kind of time the heating of the soda to make sure that you do it fairly soon afterwards. Because if you let it heat up and then you let it cool down again and then you try to do the experiment, it'll have kind of gone flat. It's not going to work as well. So the way that I like to heat up the soda is I like to put it in some sort of container. So I have a nice pitcher here. Boink! And you can fill that pitcher with some hot water. And so you want to do this maybe like 20, 30 minutes before you plan to do your explosion because that's going to help it heat the soda up and it's going to make that explosion a lot more active and a lot more fizzy. So the second tip is one that I said at the beginning, but I'm going to go ahead and say it again because it is very important. And that is to make sure you have some sort of tube, either a plastic tube if you're lucky or a paper tube if you don't have a plastic tube. So you really need to have a tube because you want to be able to make sure they're all stacked up so that all the Mentos are going to go in at once. Because once the experiment gets started, once one Mentos has fallen into that soda, you can't really add any more and your whole bottle of soda is pretty much done. So what you want to do is set it up ahead of time with a tube to make sure they can all go in at the same time. And that's going to make your experiment work much better. The last thing we need to talk about before we go outside and actually watch this explosion happen is a little bit about the science of what actually is happening here. So you might think that if when we add the Mentos we get a lot of fizzing happening that that is a chemical reaction. Fizzing is a really common sign of a chemical reaction. But this actually isn't a chemical reaction. It's only a physical reaction. Because the fizz is already inside the soda. What we're doing with the candy is we're just bringing it out. And the way we bring that fizz out is because on the side of the Mentos, all over the surface, are little tiny pin pricky little holes. If you looked at it with a really good magnifying glass, you'd be able to see them. It looks smooth, but it has a texture to it. And all these little sites on the outside are called nucleation sites. Now that's a word that just means place where gas bubbles form. And so they do. When you put the Mentos inside of the soda, all the bubbles of gas that are naturally inside of soda 
stick to the surface of the Mentos, and since all that gas doesn't have anywhere to go, it ends up shooting out the top. And the last little physical element of this has to do with the size of the top of the bottle. Because the top of the bottle is so much smaller than the base of the bottle, it's kind of like if you've ever put your finger over a hose or over a faucet and watched it spurt out at you. There's a lot of pressure that gets built into this tiny, tiny little hole. And so that causes the geyser to erupt really high off the top. So those are the two things that are happening. We have our nucleation sites making the bubbles of gas form on the sides of that candy. And we also have the size of the opening, making it blast out like a huge geyser. So if you are ready to see this experiment, then keep on watching because we are about to go outside. All right, we have made it. We are in Mr. Miles's backyard, and this is looking very, very exciting. So one last thing that I did that I'll show you quick, quick, is that I've gone ahead and put my soda right on top of my pitcher because I don't need the water anymore. And this is going to make my experiment go even a little bit higher because it has a little bit of extra height. So what we're going to do here is in just a second, I'm going to take the cap off of that soda and I'm going to hold my thumb like this over the container and when the time comes I'm going to release my thumb let all the candy go inside of that bottle and we're going to see what happens so let's do it all right three two one Woo! Woo! and now for my favorite part of this experiment I always like to take a look and how much soda we use. This was a brand new bottle when I opened it. And look at it now. We have used about two thirds of that bottle for just one explosion. And now my other favorite part of this experiment. Ah, minty. Minty.